What's on, where, and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio. Welcome to Football Focus, episode 14, where we cover all things football on the top of the south. I'm Chris Butler, and welcome back to my co-host, Paul Bryden. Good to have you back, Bridie. Mr. Butler, how are you today? Very well, and um, executive call, because apart from summer football, uh, under-17's National League, there's not a lot of local football. It's, I noticed at the Botanics the other day, they're getting the cricket pitch ready, so no, we're moving into football. summer sport. All club football's finished. Yeah. It basically finished two or three weeks ago, so yeah. all you got now is obviously the National League. Yes. Which we're not really involved in. We have a wee bit of an interest, I suppose, with Christchurch United and Kashmir Technical. Maybe the Phoenix, because um, yeah. we've got some young lads from Nelson that are over there. But apart from that, oh, and the Tasman under-17s. Yeah. They're playing for the next four or five weeks. Obviously not tracking too good, but apart from that, no, nah, done. Yeah, so uh, football comes to an end. So we're, we're going to take a rest for the summer, but watch this space because uh, we've got a couple of ideas about uh, summer sport. Mm. Uh, our very special guest today is FC Nelson Director of Football and Player, TJ Hanson. TJ, nice to have you in, mate. Thanks for having me. We've only been asking all season, and yep. we've finally got you here. Well, I yep. think he was scared. Uh, I just played hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to come up that exorbitant fee just to get him on. Yeah, that's right. Everyone else did it for nothing, but we're going to pay TJ. He knew if he held out, uh, he would be um, ending oh. the season as top guest. You know, that's that's the German in them, son. Mm. <laughs> the Germans are like that. What? What? Come what? On. Shy? Oh, they want the money. They want the money. Show me the money. <laughs> well, we'll find out a little bit more about your background in Germany. On this week's show, we're going to be talking Senior Southern League playoffs, so the game against University of Canterbury. Also, English Premiership, New Zealand Football News, and also the National League draw. And also, we're going to be catching up TJ about his time in football so far. And FC Club Development. First of all, the Southern League playoffs. And, uh, geez, uh um, it was uh, all celebrations on the home front with uh, a 3-2 win, but a slightly different story going down on to their home turf. I didn't see the game, so but uh, we got the men here from the coalface. So, TJ, I'll go to you first. What were your thoughts on, on the game? Um, yeah, I knew we always knew there was going to be a tough game down there. Um, I think uh, we had a you know outstanding performance at our home turf. You know, so very, we were very happy with that and um, obviously got the win. Um, and yeah, so Paul and I had a bit of a, a chat before obviously going down there and, you know, plodding along and thinking, okay, what, how can we approach that game? So we decided a little bit against just parking the bus, even though going down there with the one the lead sort of at half time, I guess. Um, so we thought, you know, let's be brave, go down there and, um, you know, attack and go at them, really. Um, and to be fair, the first maybe 10 ish minutes I thought we looked all right and you know um you know it didn't really come off for us but um I thought then UC sort of you know got a foothold into the game mm. they started controlling it a little bit more put a bit of pressure on us and we knew we have to you know I guess suffer a little bit uh, you know defend well and I'll see these periods where they dominate um if you want to go away with a win and so unfortunately they got a penalty pretty early on in their um, pressure period I guess um which saw them uh, take the lead um yeah, and I felt like a little bit, we were a bit stunned by that. Um, they got stronger. And um, yeah, so second goal they scored not long after, I guess, um, was a bit of a ricochet sort of thing. And yeah, but poor defending uh, across the park really from us. So um, yeah, they got their second goal and then you go into halftime with 2-0 down. But again, it, one, one goal from us would have seen us back into the game, I guess. So mm. um, we were still all... Or positive, I guess, in a way at halftime. We changed a few things. Um, looked to, you know, just um, you know, again, just play our game, get a foot in the game. I thought, yeah, maybe first couple of minutes we actually, you know, started getting on the ball a little bit more, which we wanted. And then we just got a third goal, which basically killed us a little bit. Like, um, yeah, a good good attack. Um, again, they sort of one of their players um, you know, just uh, went through our defensive line and, and scored a good goal to be fair, made it three nil. And then, yeah, it was uh, always going to be tough. Um, yeah, UC just um, were the better team on that day. Um, I'm certainly a bit disappointed, obviously, because we, after a good performance at home, probably didn't show up 
uh, and didn't play as well as we can. But it's a learning curve, you know. Mm. And um, I think it's uh, it's um, yeah, brilliant result that we actually can, you know, we played in these playoffs, got the chance, the opportunity that the club supported us, mm. that the players got us there, you know. So uh, you know, I think now we have to start looking at the positives. But obviously, you're disappointed if you. Mm. You know, go there with the win, you know, after the first leg and then can't get it over the line. But you just have to say you see probably deserve that win yeah, over the two games. What were your thoughts, PB? Uh, well, I thought it was a, a, a an opportunity we missed out on, to be honest. I, um, we we changed things a wee bit. If it's not broken, don't fix it. We sort of we should have probably stayed with the three at the back, which worked in the game against Rangers and the, 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 the game prior to that, the, the first week. We went 4-3-3 three, three, and uh, whether it made a difference, I don't know. But um, as he said, you know, we just offered all their three goals. The penalty and the other two were sort of defensive lapses. So and you've just got to keep with these teams. And we talked about it before. We, we knew it would be hard. Um, but um, we, we had the squad there to do it. And it was just, I think... And he and he and he and he said it. He said I, I thought a few of them didn't turn up. But sort of just whether it's the trip down Friday night was a bit of a long drive and early start and uh, the, the artificial which they're used to and we're not. I don't know, but a few players I thought just sort of went went sort of on their game that day. And and against a team like that, you've got to have the whole eleven working hard together and the squad. Mm. If you have two or three sort of not working. Against a side that's probably not technically better, but probably prepare a bit better, you're going to lose. And um, and I thought that's what happened in the end. And uh, they deserve their win. But um, as he said, look, it's it's one of those things we you can you can go on about it as much as you like. But at the end of the day, um, we got there and um, we competed. But uh, just a bit of a lost opportunity. And, uh, you know, I take a bit of responsibility changing the system. We kept the same side as, as last week, but uh, it just wasn't the same performance individually and collectively from the prior prior, prior week. So uh, it was a bit, I just thought without the ball, we were, we were a bit lost. You know, we had to, once you lose position, we needed to be tight defensively. And I thought we were a wee bit loose, but, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, but great season. Yeah. And it just uh, finished on a bit of a low, but um, full credit to the lads and, um, all the players that took part in the playoffs and the, and the guys that played BFC throughout the year. So. Well, you you won the league. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you got over Rangers. You know, yeah. they were a very strong side. Yeah. And yeah. then you picked up a win against a very good University of Canterbury side that won the, the Christchurch League, so yeah. or the Canterbury League. So uh, you've got to be happy with that. Last time we were in the playoffs, we lost the first game and the second game. So yeah. right. uh, there's an advancement. Yep. Um, Third time lucky. Yeah, well, that's right. And they, well, they say you've got to lose one to win one. Well, perhaps you've got to lose a couple, but it's all about learning. Um, and also, if you get a bit of a sniff, if you're not, if you feel that you're not too far off, it, it gives you the motivation to say, actually, we're going to make an earlier call. Um, the club might say, actually, we're on board, and you make an early call, and we say, if we win the league, we're going for it right from the very beginning, and you prepare the whole season. That was a conversation I had with someone afterwards. But you don't, you can't be in that position until you know you've got a sniff. If you got hammered 7-0 each time, you might say to yourselves, well, okay, we've got a bit of work to do. But you weren't far off. No, it was a bit, it was, it was a, bit of a mess. And, and TJ will agree with me. We, the, the club weren't sure if they wanted to do it. You know, we wanted to do it. And it was like, you, as you say, it's got to be done right from the word go. You need everyone available, everyone on board. You know, we had key players missing, actually, through suspension, like Ting Ting. Advance around just two players, you know, in crucial positions that play for us would make a huge difference, and we didn't have them. And, and those two would have been keen to, to help out. So, you know, with them there, would, would we got the result? Who knows? Mm. But it's certainly, you know, and Chris, I mean, Canterbury University would have been pretty upset with themselves. Who knows what attitude they had when they come up home? They might have thought, ah, we got this in the bag, mm. you know, and then they got a rev up. You know, and uh, they're on their home turf, and they thought, well, if we're going to play at the next level, we've got to turn it on. Yeah, you know, especially on our home. Well, you've, home got to, turf. you've got to beat local teams from Nelson if you want to play at that next level. Yeah, so if you can't beat FC, you're not going to compete in the South. No, way, so no, that's right. That but not far off. No, and I think you know, and you said it. You know, you got to prepare for it, and I think there's no turning back now. To be honest, you know, I think we put it out there, we put it out in the universe that we want to, you know, compete and we want to go up into that next level. And yeah, this year was, you know, we probably didn't, you know, um, plan for it, but obviously we still were always ambitious. Mm. Um, 
And uh, I think Paul said it before, you know, at the start of the season, we weren't even sure who's going to play for us. So finishing that season, winning the league and then having that that chance is, is brilliant. So, you know, and I think the club really buys into it now. I mean, you, you saw it yourself, you were there, almost 500 people, mm-hmm. I think, watched at Agapi Park. We had mm-hmm. a lot of positive feedback, a lot of young players on the sidelines, a lot of young players playing in their team. I mean, there's no turning back. We got to push on, and for me, it's just a matter of time before that club actually gets up there. Well, yeah. that's that's one thing I was really impressed about because you had a quite a young bench apart from Campbell, you know, in the in the home game. Yeah. Um, and they didn't look lost when they came on. No. In fact, one of them scored a goal, mm. um, and I thought they played very well. And also, you know, I was very impressed with Fredo who. Has mm. kind of always been on the fringes, and he's played at different leagues at different levels, and mm. he stepped up. and I thought that home game he had a, a fantastic match. Yeah, no, he, he's a great lad. Unfortunately, yeah. I, I took him off at half time on Saturday. It was just that um, I think he struggled a wee bit with the artificial, but in hindsight, I could have kept him on because the person Torn P came off and didn't really excel himself. So, a few, a few key decisions I made there which didn't really pay off, but um, it's that's that's life. Yeah, but that, no, you're right, and that's the thing. That's the beauty about FC uh, FC Nelson. They've got the ability. We've got all these other teams we can draw on, but it needs to start from the start and, and work that team together. So next year, um, it's looking a bit more promising with obviously Karina going up. Chins didn't make it, so whether those guys that played for them this year will commit full time, who knows. You know, but so, but that needs to happen, really. You know, if if you're not making, I think at the end of the day, that was possibly the difference because we do have these players available mm. at the club, but they're not available to us on a Tuesday, Thursday, where we need them to train and prepare. You know? And then and against a good side, like you see, you get found out, you mm. know, yeah. across two games, and you know, so we probably weren't ready, ready, but. Yeah, we, we weren't we far. We weren't far, and no. so hopefully we get that buy-in, and next year we go again, and then oh, it's something to discuss over the summer period, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, something to lobby for. Uh, let's get into some other stuff, and then we'll come back about the FC club development with TJ. Uh, this uh, overseas news and Manchester United were given a taste of what could have been as Harry Kane helped Bayern Munich to victory over Eric Ten Hag's uh, struggling side in a high-scoring and eventful championship, uh, a Champions League opener. So uh, that was 4-3 to Bayern Munich. So um, well I, I don't I don't think the score reflects the game yep. from what I've heard. Man United got battered. Um, there was a couple of late goals sort of in injury time, but... Um, um, you look at the result as a Man United fan, you'll go, well, that's not too bad, but they're poor at the moment. Man United, yeah, and poor. and I did wonder about the <clears throat> championship, uh, the championship league, if the results don't go their way, because sometimes you can struggle in Premiership, but you actually do it right in the champion, uh, Champions League. And but Man U, they're copping it on both fronts now. Well, they've got the squad. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sure about the manager. Oh. Well, I, I didn't they turn things around last season? Wasn't it all praise? He he, listen, he doesn't smile, he doesn't embrace anything. And I was watching, and TJ will vouch that we're watching them play Brighton the other day. Brighton scored their second goal, 30 passes. And the defense, you know, 30 passes, you can do 30 passes in a training session with no defenders quite easily. They did it against 10 players with Man United at Old Track and scored from it. And to me, what do you look at it? Lazy, yeah, defending. Just a bit poor defending. Really, just watch them play, move the ball around. So, yeah. And to me, that comes from the coach. You know, if, if I tell him to get tight, he'll get tight. What's he saying? He doesn't seem to say a lot. He's like this. <laughs> but um, well, I mean, I wouldn't have picked this season that they would be doing that. And after his praise last season. Geez, does that mean he's on the chopping block? And um... well, they got Burnley this week. If they lose that, look out. Mm-hmm. But the, the United, the, the board and the owners, they tend to be pretty loyal. Like Solskjaer lasted a lot longer, and mm. they tend to not to chop people. But um, I, I just yeah, for a big club, you know, they just very underwhelming. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, quickly, other results: Real Madrid one 0 over Union Berlin. Arsenal 4 0 over PSV. Um, Real Sociedad is uh, 1 all with Inter Milan. 
geez, I, I can't pronounce this, Galatasaray? Is Galatasaray. That Gal- the- Turkish side. Turkish side. Mm. Two all with FC Copenhagen. Sevilla, one all with Lens. Holly will be pleased with this. Sporting Braga, one. Napoli, two. Mm. And Benfica, nil. And RB Salzburg, two. So there you go, Champions League off to a runner. And uh, Arsenal, um, doing it well. Man, you have got a bit of work to do. Um, English Premiership. And um, I asked you, do you follow it? You said no. You are a... Not really. I, w- I would say I, I eight, support eight, Arsenal, but eight, I don't eight, really follow eight, it so, because eight, I didn't want you to ask me questions about it. He might be an <laughs> Arsenal fan because you've been to you've been to the Emirates with Bobby yeah. Bartlett, didn't you? you yeah, that's what, correct. Who did Arsenal play that game? Uh, what was it? Um... Fulham, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, they won 2 1. Yeah. Oh, sorry about it. <laughs> so that's, that was a great game, great experience. I mean, I always wanted to watch the Premier League. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm supporting a German club, but uh, if I were to choose a team, then it would have, would be Arsenal. Arsenal. Um, it's like old uh, Steve Clark. It's an Arsenal man. He's a Scotsman. He's Dundee United, but oh, yeah. if, if he has to, it's Arsenal. Yeah, well, here you have to because no one really talks about Bundesliga or whatever, so you have to talk about <laughs> Premier League or you know local league, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, Arsenal, but Arsenal. Yeah. All right, let's look at the lineup for this week. Man City taking on Nottingham Forest, and in the end, well, I, I wouldn't say comfortably they missed a few chances, but tipped up uh, West Ham three one, mm-hmm. uh, which we thought might be a tight affair, but uh, again, just showed the class. Um, Fulham and Crystal Palace, that'll be a tight match. Luton and Wolves, probably again um, a tight match. Luton, probably a little bit unlucky against Fulham in some areas. They just mm-hmm. haven't been able to put the goal, uh, the ball in the back of the net. Doesn't get any easier for uh, Everton, does it? Brentford, uh, they're away to Brentford. Burnley taking on Man U. Well, geez, a Burnley tip up Man U. Mm. What's going to happen there? Chelsea, another big game here, Chelsea and Aston Villa. And uh, Chelsea nil all with Bournemouth. So yeah, we were expecting big things from this uh, from Chelsea this year, weren't we? But, uh, you know, it well, just hasn't. <clears throat> I, watched the, I watched the game against Bournemouth and I don't know how they didn't score. They should have won that in a canter, but they didn't. And that's, and that's the story. That's the story. You've got to take your chances. You're Burnley Man United. Well, Ten Hag, if they lose that, he'd be looking. I don't know if they've got a bunning store over there or placemakers. He'd be looking to go and get some rope <laughs> because um, th- that could be the end of him. But um, Man City, too good for West Ham. Yeah. Robots. Honestly, I was watching that game. They look like robots, don't they? Mm. They're so well structured. They just play through teams, you know, and strong and just use a bit of width. Unbelievable. And they just, yeah, very, very patient. Because I think they went a goal down, did they? Uh, no, I can't remember the highlights. I yeah, think, I think they did. I, I think, think they right. did. Yes. And they just don't panic and they keep their shape and they just keep moving that ball. And uh, one midfielder in, the other just covers that space. It's, it's, yeah, as a young player and watching midfielders and stuff like that, you've got to watch Man City or just watch any sort of decent football DJ, you know. That's, that's, how, you, correct, that's yes. how you learn the game, basically. Yeah. Arsenal and Tottenham, that'll be a good match. Um, well, that's the game of the round, isn't it? Yeah, you'd have to say. West Ham and Liverpool would be another good one, actually. Mm. Um, who would you tip there, though? Where's that? Liverpool and West Ham. So Liverpool are at home. Oh, Liverpool and that. Yeah. It's um, Anfield. There's only one team that beat them in the last year. That was Leeds. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be done. And we got relegated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brighton and Bournemouth, you'd have to pick Brighton there. And Sheffield United and Newcastle. So... Yeah, both uh, Luton and Sheffield, they desperately need some points, don't they? But um, the games just aren't easy. No, no. Well, that Arsenal Tottenham, they'll be a cracker because Big Ange, Postacoglu, big Australian. Yes. So unbeaten. They've only dropped one had one draw, so they're at Arsenal. So this will be a big test for them, and we'll see how it gets on there. I mean, it didn't go all their way in that game, but then, you know, their class came through and they, they well, come look, back. Well, look, Sheffield United have been unlucky. If you talk to Paul Parker, he's over there at the moment. I think he went to that game, and... Um, They'll be gutted because what, 98th, 99th minute? Yeah. There seems to be a lot of injury time these days. The game's carrying on for a long, long time. That's just. Uh... Well, Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace, that was quite evenly placed right up till, mm-hmm. you know, the end and then bang, bang. And uh, well, apparently, that was what right they, at the end. What they do is that the VAR just keep the clock keeps going while they do the VAR. That's why they have, because you're always going to get VARs in games. So they don't stop the clock. Uh, so it gets added on. So that's why the games go for. 
100 minutes. Yeah. Mm. New Zealand Football News, former Ford Football Ferns head coach Tony Reading has been appointed as full-time All Whites assistant coach for the next FIFA World Cup cycle, joining Darren Baisley's team staff from October onwards. So I don't know who's going to replace uh, him as the Football Ferns. Oh, no, so we've got a Football Ferns coach. So what was he doing? Was he... Um... I, don't know. I, think he I thought he went to India. Oh, okay. Right. Where's Tavach? Double tub, it should be enjoyed right now. Yeah. A licensed coach. Good is available. I yeah, think. exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, he is a good coach. I do. I mean, he he works you hard. I, you know, there's no doubt about that. Um, He's back. Right. Back in Nelson. Right. Nice. Okay. Well, um, but yeah, I mean, when you watch his teams play, especially their defensive structure and their sliding defense, um, yeah, I do enjoy uh, watching oh, his yeah. teams play. Look, any team yeah. could coach this New Zealand team, they hardly ever play. Yeah, you know, so I think they're playing Aussie in the next. They've got a, yeah, and they've got a few other. Um, they've announced a few other games. I think against Greece and yeah, one or two yeah, others yeah. coming up, which are reasonable side. So that, I think he's definitely said to New Zealand football, "We need more games," and I think they are trying to do that, mm. which is what the pre, you know, what Danny Hay wanted, and uh, his frustration probably. I haven't heard why he left, but presumably it was to do with lack well, of he, games. He wanted the coach, and he's just got enough games from the coach. So yeah, I, I don't know what he's doing. Now, where he's gone back to teaching, or because he was a PE teacher originally at right. Mount Albert Grammar or somewhere, not too sure. Yeah, and also this weekend, the National League gets underway. Ellerslie AFC taking on uh, Phoenix. We've got um, uh, Western Springs uh, versus Central Football. Uh, we've got Corori taking on Wellington United, Auckland United taking on Canterbury United. And Southern United taking on Eastern Suburbs in mm. the uh, uh, Women's League. Uh, we went through that last time. And in the Men's League, what Western Phoenix taking on Auckland City. Auckland City probably still quite dominant in, in this game, aren't they? Uh, Manurewa taking on Wellington Olympic. Was Olympic around when you were playing? For no, Wellington Olympic's always been around. They've been around for years. Yeah. They're always a Central League club. They weren't really National League, but um, they're always a strong club. The yeah. Greeks. Mm. Yeah, um, Napier City uh, Rovers still doing it after all this time, but uh, against Petoni, which was another one that surprised you to yeah. get into this National League. Uh, Kashmir Technical taking on Auckland United, and Eastern Suburbs taking on Christchurch United. Well, we saw Matt Todd Smith and Scott Morris, two boys from Christchurch United. It was actually really good. TJ, you boys were getting changed. They actually came down. Oh, because we're in the changing sheds, because they had the English Cup final after our game at English Park on Saturday between Tech and Cross, which is not. And Matt Todd Smith and Scott Morris both came down to our changing sheds. Oh, nice. And I said, boys, just go and sail over there. But they didn't. They sort of, Fredo came out and um, it was actually really good of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, two sort of, you know, just won the Chaffin Cup. Um, and, um, Matt's obviously captain of Cross, which United. So, so who won that game for the English? Cut. Three three two to Christchurch United. Right. Okay. Three two. So that's quite close. Yeah. You're with Football Focus, and our very special guest is TJ Hansen, uh, who is the director of football at FC Nelson. And um first of all, where did it all start from you? For you. Far away from here, I guess, from the other yes. side of the world. So um So you actually live closer to Denmark than you do. Well, I live in Germany, but I was born in the most northern city in Germany, yes, which is right at the border to Denmark. So um, there's, you know, a lot of affiliation to to Denmark, I guess, in Scandinavia. Um, Can you speak Danish? Uh, not really, a little bit. Played for a Danish football club, though, and worked for a Danish newspaper. So oh. there's, you know, there's a certain connection. Even though I didn't speak any Danish, I still wrote for them, but I was more German. So, hmm. um, yeah, so uh, born and raised in northern Germany. Um, started playing footy when I was three or four years old. So what was the town or village or city? So I was born in Flensburg. Flensburg. Yeah. Right. So um, And then my parents uh, live a little bit on the the west coast, you know, 40 minutes away from that. Um, again, uh, the Danish border. Um, and, yeah, started playing there in a small town, maybe 10,000, 12,000 people. So that's where I started um, learning the trade. So is Denmark and Germany landlocked? 
I thought there's a C in between. Yeah, no, no. There, oh, no, 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 there okay, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's, there's a C on the left and on the I'm right. I was trying to check the geography because I was quite good at that at school and I thought there was... Oh, oh no, really? I'm, I'm probably talking about Sweden and Norway. And... Yeah, yeah. So the further you go up north, um, yeah. the more C you get and, you know, like, but they're still all connected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, it's quite narrow, mm. you know, between uh, that northern part of Germany, I guess. So, um, yeah, so from one coast to the other, it's, it's an hour maybe, so... Yeah, so I was always, um, that's why I probably like New Zealand, because it I was always surrounded by the ocean as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I started playing there when I was three, four years old um, and played ever since, really. Like, um, yeah, just, uh, I mean, that's what you do in Germany, I guess. You know, that's where you, you know, when you, you know, you just. It's the game. It's the game, you know, that you just, you just play. And um, yeah, I mean, I had, had a really good time um, in my hometown club, um, even though it was a small club, um, fantastic facilities, like, yeah. Um, Bundesliga teams would come and train there eventually, oh, wow. or like sometimes, and uh, even have their preseason games and stuff. So um, I was always lucky and always grass turf, uh, grass pitches, no turf. You know, I think it changed now, but um, back in the day, it was just yeah, fantastic facilities. So um, yeah, no, I spent a lot of time on the football p- uh, pitch. Um, you know, growing up, um, playing with mates, and uh, yeah, stayed stayed in northern Germany for many years, playing for different clubs. You know, um, yeah uh yeah sort of uh three or four different clubs all sort of in most of them in the same league really so uh, it was quite funny so who's the biggest the biggest club close to your area uh nowadays would be flensburg weiche which uh they are playing in the uh i think it's the fourth division now so that's that's the biggest one but then you go to kiel which is an hour away from flensburg um south you know so uh, they play in the second bundesliga um and then another hour south of Hamburg, you know, so that's, um, that's, that's, that, that's the biggest club. That's the club I support um, through the good and the bad. Mm. Uh, uh, but yeah, so Northern Germany, like where I'm from, it was not very densely populated. So you have quite a lot of pl- uh, clubs, you know, but spread it around, um, but not really like a big major club. So you have to travel south a little bit to, you know, get involved in a bit more. Um, yeah. That's a massive country, Germany. I've, I've driven through it. It's huge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So the old winters must be a bit harsh. Um, again, we are close to the ocean, so it's a bit mild up there. So you go south, that's where the winter hits a bit harder. But then say that I was home last year and um, actually it was cold enough for white Christmas. Um, and uh, actually the ponds were frozen, so a bit of ice ice hockey as well. So it does get cold. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And Hamburg, where are they sitting at the moment? Uh, in the second Bundesliga. So, right, so yeah, right. they got relegated. Uh I think five years ago, um, well deserved. You know, they were <laughs> battling uh, for many years just not to get relegated, but then deservedly went down, struggled to get back up. Uh, I think they finished um, fourth, probably like three years in a row. Last year, they finished third, which allows you to play a relegation game against the third bottom team from the oh, Bundesliga. Yeah. They played Stuttgart. Stuttgart currently, they Stuttgart won it, currently sitting in fourth place in the Bundesliga. So oh. it was always going to be tough. Um but this year, I think Hamburg uh, top of the table, if not second, maybe. But they look, I think they're ready. Mm-hmm. I would I would say it. I say it on live television about to say, uh, <laughs> that they, I think this year is a year, it's about time. Um, yeah, that they go back up. Big city, great stadium. Actually, funny enough, uh, Donetsk, the uh, Ukraine team, played in the Champions League and they actually used the Hamburg stadium because huh? uh, obviously um, can't use their own home. Turf, I guess, these days. And so oh, Shakta, they Shakta. Shakta Donets, yeah. Donets. And so they uh, used the Hamburg Stadium. And friends of nice. mine went and watched and sent me some clips on it uh, of it. And it was really, really uh, just to hear the uh, the anthem of the Champions League. Um, yeah, just back in that stadium, you know, it's yeah. So the club is big and you know, it certainly should go back up, but you know, we'll see. So um Fingers. New Zealand, when did you come here? You've been here a while now. Yeah, I've been here a while. Um, I first came here 2015. Um, just traveling? Traveling, yeah. I, I left Germany when I was 23, I think, and just started to travel the world a little bit um, and did my spell in North, North America and South America and then uh, Southeast Asia. And then it was really just uh, New Zealand or, you know, Oceania, like Australia or New Zealand left. And I always felt sort of, oh, New Zealand, that's a place I want to go. So, yeah, got a working holiday visa. You know, like so many Germans do, you know, um, yeah, just uh, just uh, travel, travel the country. Um, yeah. And uh, fell in love with it, really. Um, and yeah. And then somehow ended up in Nelson. Uh, 
yeah, uh, without knowing anyone, you know. So, um, but you weren't gonna come here. Was it? It was a. There was a job that was sort of like was it Tauranga or somewhere you were talking about? Yeah. So uh, I mean, this uh, the whole background story, really. But um, yeah. So initially, I wasn't planning on going to Nelson. I was looking for um, for Tauranga jobs in there and stuff, and it didn't really click. It wasn't really like oh, mm. for some reason, it starts in the line. Um, and no one know why because that um, yeah, made me come to Nelson mm. and yeah so um, after applying at jobs at Toranga for a long t- for a while and nothing really positive come back we just said look we'll just go to Nelson just go and see and so we did and then um, without knowing anyone just lived in Franklin Village for a little while um, so it was quite interesting and then um, Jesus so where'd you yeah. live sorry Franklin, Franklin Village. Village oh right yeah 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 oh yes right right yeah, yeah so I, yeah. Mean, I didn't know it was just a short-term accommodation sort yeah. of thing and so um but when I you know um, oh, I got to know some people and they were like oh where do you live and then Franklin Village and they were like oh we shouldn't probably live there so <laughs> yeah so, but but some people have actually, actually told me for the purpose that it fits you know I mean, it was um, uh, yeah it does it does the job you know some people need accommodation or there's short-term accommodation so it does you know um, meet that purpose oh, um, I think it's just got a bit of a persona about it you know which is um yeah you know, not yeah in some circumstances is true but another circumstance or probably most circumstances well it um, used to be the old nurse's fit, home didn't it yeah, yeah. it fits uh, it fits the opportunity that you've got i lived in a nurse's home in wellington mm. when i first went up there so yeah you've got to live somewhere don't you exactly yeah, was, yeah. And, and as you said you know it was perfect for us you know just yeah. um and it was short term anyway yeah so never yeah. start house sitting and everything but anyway i got then pretty quickly involved with the fc because um I wanted to play football mm. and because I didn't know anyone, I thought, well, football is the best way to connect to people. Mm-hmm. And I actually uh, contacted, I think Nelson based football and asked, well, what are the opportunities? And they came back, well, suburbs and FC. And I actually went online, just, you know, obviously check it out. And I went onto the um, online shop, FC Nelson online shop. And I did like the hoodie and I was like, right. I like the hoodie. <laughs> I want to wear that. So uh, I said, oh, I'll go to them first. So I did and met Gary Kolderbank, who was a director of football back right. then. And uh, yeah, he got me involved and then, yeah, sort of all happened from there, really. So, yeah. Because my, my memory of you is you appeared on the scene and you were playing, but then you you did put your hand up to help it about, and I think that led to a role. But then you sort of left, um, a, a bit, and you've come back again, and uh, that role seems permanent. So tell us about, the, uh, you know, starting to play for FC Nelson, but mm-hmm. then taking on more of a responsibility to where you are now. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as I said, so I just I just popped down to training really, and then pretty soon after, put my hand up to say, look, I'm quite keen to get involved and just coach a junior team or whatever, you know, just you know, just get me involved really. And yeah, so I did that, and then I think um, the club realized that uh, you know I'm, I was quite good with you know just coaching the kids or just teaching them. So I went to school and stuff like that, and they were like, oh, there's actually more work that you can do if you want to. And I was a backpacker really, you know, so I was like. Sweet, of course, you know, like um, I get involved, love football, um, you know. And so, yeah, so from there it grew. And so, as I said, so I started doing the skill center, holiday program, school football, basically anything that, you know, the club runs nowadays as well. So I just did everything. And then, um, yeah, from there my role grew and I became junior coordinator, then uh, football development officer, and then, uh, yeah, uh, director of football, I guess, you know. So, yeah, the rule just grew, you know, and I, I think, you know, it sort of grew you know, the rule grew when I grew as well into that role, I guess. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of, you know, stuff that we just developed and grew, you know, so I took on board and so generated more hours for myself as well, I guess. So, and then now it's a yeah, established role, I guess, within the club. And yeah, I'm really happy I have that. Yeah. So you left a little bit. Was that to, to travel home or do yeah. a bit more traveling or what? Yeah, I, I wasn't home for three years. And then, I mean, sort of COVID hit. Usually I, I oh, try to yes. get home every couple yes. of years. But then COVID hit, and so I was obviously couldn't leave. Yeah, I didn't really want to leave, to be fair, because obviously COVID was way worse over in Europe than it was here. So here we actually lived good lives, right? So, um, yeah, just decided just to stay. But then after three years, you know, I just wanted to go home and miss family and, and friends, and mm-hmm. just wanted to check in. And I was actually invited into like for five weddings, so I wow. kind of had to go. Was, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was mad. Good time though, good summer, but um. Yeah, so obviously it um, was a really good good time. And actually I said to FC and obviously the people, um, look, I, I need a, I need to step away from it. I don't want to just say like I'm, I'm going home for a bit and then come back. I kind of need to just say goodbye for a bit and see how everything works out because I wasn't sure what was going on yeah. at home and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted that freedom and I certainly enjoyed it. But FC always, you know, kept in touch. And I love Nelson. I love the people, I love the club. So 
I wasn't a big sell really like um, pretty soon after. And I realized I wanted to not stay in Germany. You know, I left Germany, you know, many years ago, you know, because I want to see something different. And I don't know if I really fit in anymore. I enjoyed it while I was back, but I think I kind of, I don't know, I kind of fit in here at this moment in time. So that's why it was easy to sort of come back and I'm, I'm glad I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so then, you know, you made noises about coming back and then how did that then lead to director of football for FC? Um, well, I, there, there was a role here, wasn't there? Yeah. So I guess when I left, I think it wasn't just me who left. It was Davor Tavic as well. And I think we had uh, Dermot who was coaching. So we had quite a few, I guess, uh, good coaches or a bit of expertise leave FC I think then the last year was difficult to sort of fill that that void in a way. Um, so I, I know that some people stepped up, like Chris Main and Martin Delgado um, stepped up. Young lads. Fairly young, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I mean, to be fair, when I first did it, it was, it was a steep learning curve, mm -hmm. you know. Like you have to deal with a lot of different people and, and, you know, like parents and stuff. So it's not always easy, and especially if you're still fairly young, I guess. So I think they learned it almost the hard way. It takes quite a lot to run a club and you need everyone to sort of, you know, support and stuff. So it's difficult for them. And if, I think the club sort of, you know, um, was, yeah, I think it was a difficult season just mm -hmm. overall, you know, with a lot of things and COVID also, you know, was part of it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there was a bit of a need. And I think the the young lads realized, oh, that's probably not, we're not going to continue like that. And so they were looking actively for someone to take that role, um, you know, to step into that proper role again to lead the club and, mm -hmm. That's sort of how that conversation started. And then I had a good conversation with Phil, Phil Thompson, club president. Um, he rang me many times in Germany, actually. So, uh, yeah. And then from there, we just had honest, good conversations about what we want. And as I said, it didn't take much to get me excited to come back. Well, the club's got good numbers, isn't it? It's a, it's a healthy, growing club. Yeah. Oh, certainly. We sort of cover the Nelson City area. So there's uh, lots of juniors, a lot of senior teams. Yeah. It's exciting, exciting you know, prospect. So tell us about the role now. What kinds of things does a uh, director of football do? What don't I do? Really? Right. <laughs> like, uh, well, there's really just uh, Nicole, who's the admin person, and myself, that are more or less employed at the club. So um, everything that sort of needs doing is being done by us, more or less. And then obviously, you have the committee that supports. Um, we have a couple of paid coaches, but that's about it. So um, there's a whole raft of things you have to, to do and look after. Um, basically, as you said, you know, there's a lot of people involved, lots of teams. Um, we have 11 senior teams and 16 youth, junior youth teams, then fun football and all the programs, the academy we run, school football, all the programs and, you know, all sorts. Um, so, yeah, that's really the day-to-day, the -day, just making sure the club runs um, the day-to-day -day stuff and everyone's sort of able to play as well as obviously having a bit of a plan of where we want to go, you know, and trying to, you know, upskill coaches, players, uh, facilities, everything that you really need in order to leave equipment and stuff, you know, like um, there's a whole lot that, that can be done. And so, yeah, so it, it's difficult to say what, you know, like there's quite a, a long -ish list, I think. But at the end of the day, you know, we share responsibilities as well. And, you know, Nicole is doing an amazing job in the in the background, you know, most of the time in the background. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just have uh, good people involved in the club that do a lot of work as well, voluntarily work that you need in order to you know, push on and um, have a healthy, happy club, really. Yeah. So from where you are now, where you see the club now, what what are uh, some of the positives, but also what are some of the work-ons you'd, you'd like to see develop? I mean, positives, I mean, we initially said it, you know, I think the, the pinnacle of the club, you know, I, I feel like if you are an ambitious club, you need a pinnacle that the aspirational players sort of strive towards. You know, I think you have an academy, so you kind of need something like that. And I think the first team has been very successful. You know, um, can we do it with the women as well? I think that'd be uh, growing that sport. I think this year we had two women's team, which we haven't had since I've been involved. So that's a definitely a, a positive. But there's still work to be done, you know, to align these teams a little bit better. Um, yeah, and I guess in general, just uh, just growing the club, you know, getting more people involved, and, you know, just having a, a positive experiences for everyone that is playing, whether you are an ambitious player or you're just a social player, mm -hmm. um, whether you are young or old, it doesn't matter. Like we have a place for everyone. And I think, you know, we, we want to maintain that and grow that, you know. So I, for me, the most important thing that, you know, we, we, you know, we work for the community in a way, you know. So 
we have a lot of uh, players and, you know, the first team, the aspiration team is one team, but then you have 10 other teams or maybe nine that are maybe not as aspirational as that. And you still need to cater for that, you know? So I think you always have to look at the bigger picture, you know? And um, yeah, I think the the members will tell you if you do a good job or not, you know, mm. um, whether they stay with FC, whether they, you know, uh, show up for prize giving events and support the first team. I, I don't know. Like, uh, I think they give you good feedback. And that is the same, uh, the junior new space as well. You know, like, I mean, a lot of Saturday mornings when you go down to Neil Park, where you have all the juniors play and you rub shoulders with all the coaches and the, the players, you know, and, and parents. The parents and the parents, yeah, mm. the parents. And they'll, they'll give you good and honest feedback of what's going on. And I feel there's a lot of good work that's been going on at FC across the board. It's not me. It's not just me anyway. Like there's a lot of great people that are involved and couldn't do it alone. So um, that really reassures that we are on the right path and that it's yeah, exciting. There's, there's one thing I'm really, really looking forward to um, from the club moving forward, and that's the club rooms. I think that's huge for the club going forward. If you can get that community hub up and running, there's your base. Then you've got it's just about all there. And then it's just I think everything else after that will take care of itself. So, And that's in the pipeline, isn't it? It is apparently is very promising, but we have spoken about it many, many Numerous times. Occasions. The plans look good. The plans look great. They look great three but years ago, but um, but it's on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but we're working on it, and I think the club has done a great job. And still, without having that hub, still trying to be you know a united club more or less. Yeah. But I fully agree. If you had those club rooms, then I think you know you can get them all together, and we could get even tighter and. Fulfill those promising, you know. Um, so just on your and just on your playing, you've obviously played how many yeah, how many years now for FC? Four years? Five, four, five years. Have yeah. you enjoyed it? No, it was good. <laughs> pretty, pretty 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 enjoyable. Pretty Your enjoyable. first stint was with Locos? No, my first stint oh. was with the reserves. So, oh, that's right. That's yeah, good. with Gary. So when I first turned up for that training session, I remember because you were training the first team mm. i think on guppy park and the reserves were just playing next to guppy park having a bit of a five aside or whatever and for me because i i was obviously traveling and didn't play mm. um, just before that so i was just happy to get back involved and i uh, actually made some friends like uh, bobby bartlett yeah. you know so and and uh, tommy uh, sorry tim moskowski and stuff so players that sort of stayed in the reserve mm. side so i was quite keen oh, i'll stay with them so first year was actually reserves yeah second year was local mm -hmm. because i was coaching the women so it was women, uh, coaching the women's first team. So I couldn't play at three. No, that's so right. I had to play at one. So I played 45 minutes for local and then went to the women's game and coached them. Um, it, was, it was really enjoyable. Uh, good mates with a lot of these local lads. And we won the league, actually. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was cool. And then I um, I joined the first team. Mm. Right. And it's, I think it's four, three or four seasons. So it was... was PB wasn't coach then, was he? Was, no, he was. Oh, he was. Okay, so the first year that you played for FC, PB was the coach. Yeah, no, I think you, you must have started. Well, when this, I sort of... this, this year was my seventh year. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, right. Jeez, that's almost a decade. I know. Well, I, did, well, I didn't last year because I had knee surgery. Yeah. But yeah. six years prior to that, and this yeah. is my seventh year. No wonder I've gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yep. You, you haven't gone completely grey. No. <laughs> well, yeah, that takes a to it takes a toll on your ticker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A lot of you got to keep that blood pressure down. A lot of teas on that sun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh no, it's good. Well, no, you've yeah, well, no, you've been an integral part of the side, and uh, you've been captain the last couple of couple of years, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Until uh, when Nick Crosswell, I think, oh, he yeah. stepped on. So yeah, yeah, so, I just stepped up in that term. Senior player. Um, yeah, no, I'm really. Oh, that's oh, good, TJ. That's good. Um, so summer coming up, so a bit of a transition coming out of winter season into summer. So what are the things uh, that the club have got planned for the summer? Oh, mainly I think it's summer football. Yeah, you know, I think people know that Tuesday nights at Neil Park North Road there's always summer footy on, so we run that again starting after Labor Weekend. So um, the registration is open, so everyone can sign up for that. Um, also, we start again our school football. It's on Wednesday, so all the primary schools um, can send in uh, little five-a-side teams. And it's from year one to year six. Um, open for everyone. It's free. I think NBS uh, sponsors us, which yeah. is uh, huge. It's, it's amazing. Like um, I actually went through all the uh, into all the schools uh, just recently. 
and just you know hopefully it can get a lot of these kids to come and play just enjoy it you know it's like whether it's a kick around for some that you know have never played before some girls obviously coming down and or some you know future pros whatever they're going to be but it's open for everyone and um, it's always good buzzing feeling down there when all the kids play. so is that neil park Yes. Yeah, on, on, on Wednesday, Wednesdays. On okay. Wednesdays, yes. And if you if you do, are interested in summer football, where do you register? Oh, just just online, really. Just either through our Facebook page or just um, just got FC Nelson. Yeah, just yeah. website or, or the FC the website. Nelson yeah. website. Yeah. Open now. Open now. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, look, uh, TJ, it's fantastic to have you in. You're obviously an integral part of FC and uh, now a very important part of its future development. So it's great to be able to get some insight, not only from a playing perspective and, and what you're doing playing for the first team, but also behind the scenes and, and growing the base for FC. Um, it's always interesting to see not only what's happening on the field, but also behind the scenes. So uh, it's a lot of hard work from a lot of people, isn't it, to, to get mm. that far. So uh, thanks very much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. PB, uh, what's happening? Uh, so we've got Giza with the under-17s. That's still going? Yeah, well, they played at the weekend, didn't they? They had a game against uh, Nomads, which um, we actually were out there watching that. Um, I think they lost 4-1. Wasn't particularly and wasn't a great performance. <laughs> the Nomads boy had to go up front. He he looked about twenty seven, not <laughs> seven. He was he was about six foot four. Oh, right. But they they looked a lot sharper than our boys. But obviously, Geezer and Dave haven't had the lads together for so long. But yep. um, so they've got a bit of work to do there. Not easy. I think they need probably a bit more time and probably just need a few more games together to actually get them gelling. But I think they got they they got three or four more games and then I think there's nothing after that. So yeah, summer football and um. Start planning for next year and see what happens. Darvel Tavich is back in town, which is good to see. He's done his dash in Wellington, so hopefully we'll get him involved with the club. Um, I'm not sure why he didn't apply for the Phoenix job. I would have done if I was him. Um, well, you'll have to sit him down and grill him on a few things. Well, yeah. I just, yeah. What's happened with the Phoenix? You just don't hear anything at the moment, do you? No, it's a bit quiet at the moment. Who fuck uh... has gone? The other guy that was doing it, the big, the big fella, you know, I just oh yes, yes, I just yeah. thought it was a great opportunity for when they advertise a job that Darvel Tavich applies for, it. Mm. and then he gets TJ Hanson and Paul Bryden as assistant. Oh right, is that right? I was wondering where this was going. Let's go to Wellington. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> all right, and uh, yeah, for you over the summer, what? Uh, oh God, I've already been asked, am I playing cricket? Well, I can't. Oh, yes, I yes. can't even bowl. They said, well, you can bat. I said, yeah, possibly. So, <laughs> oh no, look, I'll just have a bit of time out. This year's been long and hard. It's difficult. I've been training kids since late January. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, I know we, I'm disappointed that we we lost at the weekend, but and, 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 and again, I'm sort of relieved to have a bit of a break. Yes. Sometimes you just need to clear your head. And, yeah. You know, and um, I think the under-19s off to Napier, hopefully in a few weeks. So TJ's taken them FC, so that's a first for the club. And um, but, you know, we'll just sort of work for a few things and have a few barbies and a few quiet ones on the deck, Chris. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. TJ Re knows what we mean, don't you, son? Uh, recharge the batteries. Yeah. All right. Well, PB, as uh, we discussed earlier, this is going to be our last mm. podcast for the season yeah. uh, covering local football. But um, there is some ideas about doing a combined sports show with Les Edwards. So uh, we'll update you on that, and that'll cover uh, some of the summer football goings on with yep. National League and what have you, but also – uh, a bit of cricket and, and some other sports that are happening over the summer period, but uh, watch this space. But um, on behalf of myself, uh, really appreciate the time you've put in to come in and no hear your vast knowledge of uh, what's happening with uh, not yeah. only local football, but um, New Zealand football as well. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Love the game. Was also uh, need to shout out to all our guests. So we really appreciate them uh, yeah. giving up their time to come in and have a chat. And some of the feedback that we have been getting is that it's great to have an opportunity to actually listen in to what's been ha happening on local football and to discuss it uh, not only what's happening on the pitch but behind the scenes mm. and um and people have seemed to have been enjoying that so uh, we appreciate that feedback and uh, we look forward to bringing it to you again next season well there's just no media out there there's just no newspaper anymore well there is but there's not much in there it's just yeah we're still like i'd, I'd have to shout out to andrew board and the nelson yeah, weekly they do yeah, yeah, they do, do some write-ups but it's not like it used to be no, you not. know we always go back to what it was like, you know, in the dark ages. But 
um, yeah, there's less resources for sports uh, reporters and those kind of things these days to get out there and cover everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that sports clubs, not only football, but all clubs um, struggle. The, there is the scenario where it's easier to post things on social media, but that is another job, especially when you're in a situation, say in your case, you've got perhaps two paid administrators Um you know, the clubs had to find funding for that for a start. And then there's always limited resource on time for people to do those kind of things. And social media is an easier way to post. But beyond that, uh, to get some wider media coverage is very difficult. So hopefully what we're doing in our part is providing a, a little bit more insight um, by doing these podcasts. So we'll be definitely back for next season. Mm. And uh, just like the English Premiership, uh, what drama will entail who will win who will lose um, who will be champions at the end of the day <laughs> will FC be the Man City or, or will Rangers do a comeback so watch this space thank you very much for all those that lis- listen and we really appreciate your time and we look forward to coming back to you in the not too distant future enjoy your summer Nelson Radio. It's the talk of Nelson.